Welcome, everybody, to both sides of the conversation, to tonight's Hidden Gym segment. Tonight, we have some amazing gyms on here tonight. Uh, the conversation should be amazing. Uh, just looking forward to jumping in this room real soon. But before we get started, just want to say to all the people out there, be safe. This COVID is spreading fast. Uh, things are happening in our community left and right, and we just need to keep our prayers out there, keep a prayer out there for our co-founder, for Jada, for our staff, and all the people that's bringing these amazing things to us and to the community. Um, in these times, there's a lot of things happening, things are changing, and uh, we just need to uh, keep people in their prayers. But tonight is our Hidden Gym segment. I'm always excited because these are the people, individuals in our community, community leaders, people that are doing amazing things. We usually have our business uh, people on here as well, our black and brown business Businesses. Part of this segment is to highlight our businesses in the community. We have some previous hidden gym business owners, amazing sisters doing some amazing things. We have some amazing brothers doing some amazing things on the business aspect. So that's what this segment's about, promoting our black and brown businesses and highlighting individuals in our community that's doing amazing, amazing things for our community. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to open this up. We're going to start off with uh, my brother, Nate. Uh, this brother was here with us yesterday uh, on Sunday for our Sunday conversation. Uh, amazing conversation for the Black Dad experience. Um, I, I want to just say this before I go. A lot of dads reached out to me and they didn't get the notice and they was really upset that I didn't get to reach out to a lot of it. It wasn't on, uh, <laughs> on purpose. Um, it just kind of came out that way. And uh, definitely we got another opportunity coming up at the end of the month to uh, to do some co-panelists with our uh, the black men and uh, black and brown men and women of the community to continue that conversation. Um, but tonight we're going to start off with Nate. Uh, Nate Ford, uh, some of you guys, I mean, most of the people know Nate's uh, a, a gym in all areas. I mean, but if you don't know tonight, you're going to get to know him. Um, Nate is doing some amazing things in our city. Um, he is uh, uh, running a, a, a one of the top flight uh, basketball programs, mentoring our youth, uh, doing so much community outreach uh, with Park and Rec, uh, giving back to our community, feeding the people, doing some amazing work. And um, I'm going to go ahead and bring Nate in and let him tell you some of the amazing things that he has going on. So with that being said, Nate, come on and, and introduce yourself to the people. Tell them all the amazing things you got going oh, on. Oh, man, Carl Rico, I don't, you know, I don't like to do all that. But anyway, uh, Nate Ford, you guys, if you're from San Francisco, you know me. Um, um, I was with the Boys and Girls Club of San Francisco for 30 years and recently shifted over to the city of San Francisco um, into the Requity program to provide equity programs for um for uh, people who otherwise would not be able to access them for the Rec and Park program. So we have um, taken that by a storm. We've, um, I mean, you know, the mayor has directed us, directed us to make sure that we give free 100% scholarships for every kid that's living in housing subsidy in the city. So that's been a great thing. Um, you know, uh, you know, since COVID hit in March, we had to pivot or what we were doing um, as far as for the Rebels, because I run the San Francisco Rebels, um, started in 1990 with one team, and this is our 31st year season going at our 30th year. 30th year was kind of like a wash, so we kind of were approaching this as um, year 30, 31 slash or something like that, whatever you may call it. But we had to pivot a lot, and what we've done, uh, we've taken our dollars and stuff and and dedicated to serving, um, you know, families groceries. So along with Safeway grocery delivery, 
and um, you know, Safeway itself and a few other um, anonymous donors, we have able to provide 41 families each week with $150 in grocery, groceries. And that's, um, they go on the Safeway.com um, website and pick the groceries and they get delivered it to them. So that's something that we, we have been sustaining every week since the, uh, the pandemic hit. Um, it's been a, you know, a great feeling to make this happen. And um, I'm just proud of those efforts. Um, we recently uh, teamed up with the San Francisco Soldiers, uh, San Francisco Bay City, uh, SF Champions, and we did uh, two different uh, food drives to help feed and, you know, um, make sure the less fortunate are fed and taken care of during these holiday seasons. So that, that captured two things. They bought the kids from, you know, different organizations together and whatever animosity or whatever that, you know, parents felt or coaches or whatever felt that was a two days that we got to really spend the day together and not think about none of this stuff and really be friends and learn about each other and all by doing a good call. So it was just something that I'm very proud of and making sure that we're doing. Um, then, you know, Rick, I'm always being pulled with this madness in San Francisco, what's going on, especially in the as of late, you know, I lost three players that played for me in 10 day span and uh, about a week and a half ago. And that really has uh, touched me a lot. So uh, my phone's been ringing off the hook, you know, from the, you know, the mayor, she calls me all the time, but you know, I'm, I'm getting different calls from different people. What can we do? And, you know, I'm just trying to wrap my head around how three, you know, black men has been taken from us for some senseless violence. And, you know, I'm trying to wrap myself around that. Um, but otherwise, you know, and then we're doing the case management program for, you know, not kids. We decided it doesn't have to be a rebel. You don't have to play for the rebels and this and that. We found that, you know, kids are not logging on the Zoom. They don't have a fresh breakfast in the morning. So I got case managers going to deliver breakfast in the morning, making sure they log on the Zoom. So we got like 66 kids in our case management program. And they're probably all from low income areas, but we take anybody who needs some help. And we're just trying to make sure that, you know, these kids are staying on course because honestly, man, I've seen a kid that had all F's last year and all of a sudden he's a 3.5 student. And I, I, I'm trying to understand. <laughs> and maybe Frank can talk to this later on, but uh, Corey, oh, I see Corey over here too. I'm trying to figure out how this can be, man. I really am, man. This is, this hey, is man. crazy. Hey, right man, they, they they can work off Google, man. They find all ass on Google, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But go ahead, John. Yeah, so I'm here. I'm here for about an hour or so, man. I'm here to join it, man. Come on, let's do it. No, definitely, man. And just want to appreciate you, uh, Nate, because a lot of people, they really don't understand the impact that you have on our community. And that's why you were nominated as, as a hidden gem. Not only, the, like you said, the sports end, just the amazing conversation you've been putting together with Rainy. Right. Uh, talking about the police stuff, really talking to the young people, giving the, the community an uh, opportunity to hear from the young people. And right. I know Corey, when Corey come up, you know, one of the things that we all vow for is we need as the elders of the community to listen to the young people. They have some answers and right. ideals as well. And um, I just want to salute you on that uh, as well, uh, Nate, because it is so hard to get the older generation to bridge the gap and work with the young people and I just think it's the magic, the gift that God gave you that you yes. continue to, to merge these young people with the community. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I and mean, I appreciate that. I think part of it and uh, a lot of things go under wraps with the rebels, like we're just basketball. Well, we're, we're doing a lot of different things. Violence prevention is one. You know, I'm, I'm citywide. So I may have two kids from Hunter's Point, two kids from Sunnydale, three kids from Filmo, a kid from Chinatown, a kid from Mission, all on one team. And you know what I'm saying? And that's that's the beauty of what we're what we're doing. I'm just not just sticking to one area. It's you know, I'm pretty much citywide and I um I am citywide and I've um I've taken pride in that that you know I'm able to now if I'm older, well, even when I was younger, I was able to go to every neighborhood, but I take pride, I'm able to go to every neighborhood and kind of talk to who whatever that problem may be to make sure that you know that they keep in you know, our, our health and safety and um, things at the forefront, you know, um, there's a lot of things that's distracting us right now. And I get it. 
I really get it. There's a lot of things that's holding us back, but you know, we can't destroy our, destroy our own selves. And that's what these people are, they want us to do. They want us to self-destruct. And you know, at the end of the day, when all this pandemic over, like the EDD and all that, man, that stuff about to be over with and people gonna be going to jail. And say it. Stand, and I'm just trying to make sure that we all stand together and making sure that you know, don't let that five minutes of fame cost you 50 years to life in jail. That's you know right, that's right. Man, and that's and that's what's up, man. And that's why we appreciate you, Nate, because you always uh uh you know an innovator, you always trying to galvanize people, and that's one thing that I respect you, and I and I think you are a definition, and all the brothers on here tonight is a definition of what good leadership is about. And I know sometimes these conversations we all Nate, is very difficult, <laughs> uh, but you always open your arms to everybody, especially to the brothers. And that's one thing that I want to make clear because a lot of times we hear this brothers don't unite, people got egos. And let me tell you, I know firsthand, Nate has always reached out. Can I help you? Can I do anything, any information? And that's what we need in our community. We already have enough things against us. We have so many of our leaders that are divisive in the community. And it's great to work on the side of you, Nate, and, and, and be a part of the things that you have going on. And you always about galvanizing the community, working together, trying to find peace. Even when people don't want peace, you're still pushing peace. Let's work together. And I, I think that's that's what leadership looks like. And yeah, I, I'm yeah. just glad you able to do that for us. No, you're right. And and with you know, when I grew up, you know, I, you know, we still had that little thing when, you know, when when old Willie Brown was in office, you know, it was Kim Mitchell from Sunnydale. You had uh you had her uh Herm Lou over here, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Phil Mo, you had Creech and uh Rack and all them dudes. You, they used to bring everybody together. So I've always known about just the peace, you know, the peace concept to everything, man. Lakeview, you know, Kenny, Matt, and Gale, all them dudes. We all used to have round tables, man. And that's all what it's all about, man. It wasn't about where you was from or what you was doing. It was all about helping each other. And little did people know that, man, we always helped each other. You know, SJ, you know, Sean Joyce, and, you know, it's just, you know, you know, I can go on and on, but yeah, I know, I think you guys need the picture. We all, you know, I was just taught and brought up to raise that way, man. We ain't got to do this and that. We could be the ones that bridge the gap. And that's all I'm trying to do because we still trying to bridge the gap from back in the 80s, man. We still trying to bridge this gap. As soon as we think we getting this close, you know, uh, I can remember uh, little Howard and little Donnie called a, you know, a, a, you know, a peace treaty in Fillmore and 10 minutes later, man, everything popped off. It was like, man, come on, man. So this is a constant battle, man. I'm in the trenches. You know, I've been deflated. I can definitely admit I've been deflated the last two weeks because I've lost three people that was very close to me, but you know, I'm still committed to this work and trying to make sure that, you know, San Francisco just, you know, just, you know, stand up. You feel me? But I appreciate you having me on, man. No, definitely, man. And I mean, you know, I, I've been keeping up with you. You know, I follow you. And um, I just want to thank you, too, because you always uh, give inspiration. And, you know, you always being honest. You know, as men, sometimes it's hard to, to express how we feel. And I think you've done a good job expressing the feelings of losing these young people when you dedicate so much time to helping them be the great individuals they are. And then some, right. some tragic situation happened to take them off the planet and away from the people that love them. So just once again, just wanted to highlight you. Thank you That's for coming right. on. Uh, Nate, can you go ahead real quick and just uh, verbalize how people could get a hold of you? Uh, yeah. You want to donate, support, volunteer with you? Can you just tell the people how to get a hold yeah. of you? Sometimes, you know, we, we, we get on this show, we get going, and we forget to make yeah. sure that people know, because there might be somebody out there watching, like, hey, you know, I want to get involved. So can you let the people know how yeah. to get a, get a hold yeah, of you? Yeah, so we got, you know, uh, again, uh, I appreciate that, John. We got a lot... You know, some joint efforts going. We still got the food thing. We're doing a secret Santa for unfortunate kids. And we're definitely doing something for a few kids that lost their for dads in the last few, few weeks. We're doing some stuff with them and talks with the Warriors. But you can definitely give me a um, shout at uh, sfrebels1990 at gmail.com. Um, you can definitely get to me or 415-716-0041. That's my phone number. Um, I'll put it in the chat as well. But um, yeah, man, if you, I mean, if you want to help, I mean, you don't even, and it doesn't have to be financial. You want to help go deliver some gifts on Christmas morning, man. Let's make sure we, we, we there making some, uh, 
the smiling faces and make sure that uh you know these kids and uh you know the and people that who aren't able to have a, a great christmas um have some kind of you know something to you know smile about so um i'll put it in the chat john thank you i appreciate you Oh, yeah, no, definitely, man. And, and, and like Nate said, man, 30 years. You want to talk about defining consistency, not quitting, ups and That's downs, right. trials and tribulations. Right. You know, right. there's a lot of moments when we're doing this work that we want to just give up. How many times? Mm. And the brother's still there, man. Get behind this brother and support him. I love you, my brother. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks for letting the people know what you're doing because they need right. to be heard. Because a lot of times in our community and sometimes from our women, they think black men ain't doing nothing. We're not standing <laughs> up. And I just like, I, I'm, I'm happy tonight because last week we had all women and we praise our women all the time. But it's great to have great, great kings in here tonight, man. So thank That's you. Right. I appreciate I appreciate right. you, man. Appreciate, appreciate you. you know. If you can hang I'll around, be on with us, you can hang around with us, little bit. A little I'm gonna hang out. Hey, go yeah, ahead, you, man. So let's go ahead. We gonna move on. Uh, you you guys heard Nate Ford, one of the great guys of our community, been around doing it, working together. We are gonna move on to our second hidden gym tonight. We got a few, and uh, we gonna keep moving. But today we got uh, man, amazing brother, man. We got Frank Knight. This brother right here is doing some amazing things in the East Bay. You know, right. another brother committed to the youth. It ain't all about just basketball. It ain't all about sports. This brother is a motivational speaker. He's a coach, right. an educator, and he's at one of the top uh, Catholic schools here in the Bay Area and pushing education first. You know, see, these right. the type of guys you get with Nate and, and Frank and these brothers on here, Corey and them, and, and, and Harold, right. it's about education, making sure our young people understand that sports is second, education is first and having a back and going to back for him. So without further ado, I'm going to let Frank come on, introduce himself to the people. And uh, Frank, let all the people know the amazing things you got going, not over there, but on, on your own ventures. John, what's up, man? Thank you for having me, uh, having me on. First of all, you can't have me come on after Nate, man. Nate's a legend, man. Uh -huh. Man, I mean, seriously. I mean, what, what am I going to say after him? Um, I, I just had to say, man, I've known Nate for 30, 30 plus years, man. Uh, my journey started with this little AAU basketball back in 1987 under a dude named Melvin Landry. Um, Bushrod, Running Rebels was the name of the team that we played for. And from that point on, you know, I got bit bit by the bug, man. I love competing. And it was awesome to have young men in my life like uh, Melvin Landry, like Howard Gamble, um, like Derek Smith, bunch of, you know, strong black men who basically donated their time to work with bad little kids from East Oakland, West Oakland, and North Oakland, right? And just watching them, you know, pour love into us and our team, you know what I mean? Kind of motivates you to want to do the same thing. And the crazy thing is that group that was there together that played on that first Melvin's team in like 87, 88, you know, you got cats that graduated from Harvard and stuff. You got cats in the streets though, but they holding it down. You know what I mean? You got cats at PG&E, you got pet cats as lawyers and teachers and stuff. It's crazy. Um, and all of that is on them, man. They they did that for us because we knew what the numbers was. And just to have those black men in your life that you can look up to and say, I can be that is, uh, is, is, is probably better than anything you're going to learn in a textbook. Um, so I wanted to say that just, just, just off the top. So I played for the Oakland Rebels, man, all the way through high school under Mel and them. And uh, I went to Fremont High School in Oakland. I was born and raised in East Oakland. Uh, grew up in the Rolling Hunts, man. And, you know, when I was young, just trying to figure out a way to get out. That's the number one thing. Now, how am I going to get up out of here? You know what I mean? I don't want to stand on the corner late night. I ain't got that kind of heart. You know what I mean? But I'm a hell of an athlete. So let me chase this dream. You know what I mean? And it was a bunch of black men who helped me, guide me to get to my dream, man. I played at Fremont. Uh, was lucky enough to get a scholarship to St. Mary's College in Moraga. Uh, and that is a night and day, let me tell you. Coming from East Oakland and getting planted in Moraga was the craziest, it was like the twilight zone. Um, but, you know, I remember my mom's told me, look, you're there for a purpose, man. Learn how to play both games while you're there. Learn how to maneuver in both, in both worlds. And I remember that. I'm like, what is mom's talk? I didn't understand what she was saying at first. You know, when I graduated from there, I understood that. 
you know, mom is like, you know, you can talk to people in the hood, you can talk to people in the streets, they, they love you, they know you, but can you do that same thing in a boardroom? You know what I mean? Can you get them, cat? can you leverage them cats to get them to do what you want them to do for your community, for people who look like you, right? Um, so I kind of took that with me, man. And I got my first coaching job at Fremont High School in Oakland, back in my alma mater. Loved it. I taught there. You know, I taught history there. So, uh, social science chair, ended up being athletic director there. I was there for 10 years, man. Loved it. Worked directly with cats in my community. Cats that looked just like me. I loved it. And I got a phone call out the blue and Moreau Catholic was looking for a coach. And they asked me to come over and interview and gave me the job. And I almost didn't take it. Uh, Cause I really loved what I was doing in Oakland, man. I loved what I was doing in my community. Um, people actually were calling me and was like, "You crazy to take that road job? You stupid? What are you? They terrible. They ain't won. You know, they ain't won a game in twenty years, kind of thing, right?" Um, but I looked at it like this. I'm like, "Look, a bunch of the guys I grew up with, kids wouldn't send they they wouldn't even send their kids to me at Fremont." I mean, it's crazy when you really think about that, though. Like, it's like you know, they wouldn't send them to a guy they know in the hood, right? So in my mind, I'm like, you know what? If I can even the playing field a little bit, if I can get a couple kids out of East Oakland, a couple kids out of Richmond, a couple kids out of Berkeley, you know, a couple kids out of the hood and some other areas and get them this good private school education that gets them that little stamp, you know, whatever the little stamp is, get them that stamp. And then we can deliver them to colleges and get them some degrees and get them out of here. They can play professional basketball and stuff like that. So that's where, and, and that's why I started funneling all my thing in. And doing that, I ended up starting my own AAU program, Night Basketball Academy, very small. Um, we work with all, I tell everyone, we work with the C kids, uh, the kids that just want to get on the floor. They don't even know how to jump stop, they don't even know how to reverse pivot, or none of that. We get blown out, but it's a developmental thing. Our thing is like, just keep getting better, man. I mean, you love the sport. You're not good enough to play for the Rebels. Mel would call and send me guys. You know, Howard would call and send me guys, guys they would cut. You know what I mean? And we would take them uh, because kids just need to play. And we wanted to make it a, uh, you know, make it a way for them to get on the floor and, um, and and have some success. And the crazy thing is we got them on the floor and we started to beat some people, which was which was kind of crazy. Um, so between the two, you know, Moreau Catholic and uh, running KBA, um, just doing those things. Now, the crazy thing is at this point in my career, the first group of kids we dealt with are now like juniors in college. And some of them have just graduated. You know, I think right now we got five Division One players currently playing basketball right now um, from our program at, at, at Moreau. These kids, and I hate to say this, need us more now than ever um, with all the stuff that's going on, you know, especially if they get their hands on some money. Um, so me and a, a couple other Black guys that I've been, you know, kind of dealing with, Dante Point is one of the guys we've been talking about. We're going to put together a consultant firm. And, and try to help these young athletes and these young guys who are trying to get in. You know, there's a lot of young black coaches who are trying to be college coaches and ADs. And, you know, people don't even know where to go to find them. You, you know what I mean? So we want to start a black search firm. You know what I mean? Um, we have the talent. You know, we are the hidden gem. You know, and it's getting exploited. It's time for us to kind of rally around this and say, look, young brother, you about to get this chunk of change. You need to put some of this to the side. You need to do something with the community. This, You know what I mean? You need to think the long game. You're not going to keep getting this check forever. In four years, this check is stopping. What are you going to do in this four years? You know, those kind of conversations. You know what I mean? Um, because we want these kids to have longe longevity wealth, man. We don't want these kids to hit and be broke again. I mean, this is what we're working for, right? So their kids and their kids could have something. So that's just a little bit about me. And I I'm happy to be on the conversation, man. Anything I can help do uh if you're looking to get in contact with us it's uh, nightbasketballacademy.org um and i'm the coach at moreau you can find me on their website too if you need to reach me um but anything i can do to help with the conversation man and to put these minds together to help uh the youth i'm, I'm all for it man that's what's up man thanks frank uh for all the stuff you're doing amazing stuff man and and i i know i witnessed it and i remember moreau back in the days man and you guys helped uh, at, at the reverse gentrification. I remember <laughs> what it was. <laughs> I remember what it was. So hey. many of us over there. Hey, well, John, I'm, I'm just, hey. the coaches. I see Tony. No, I see. Hey. Come hey, on, man. I'm the first. You know, I'm the first black person they ever hired as a teacher there. And that's that was. What I'm and that was that's in 2010, man. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and then not only that, the success you have. 
Man. And to be that guy at such a prestigious place, right. I mean, it's just amazing, man. And that's why, you know, we wanted to get you on here as a hidden gem. And, and you know, we already know it. And people in the community that know you're not hidden. But to these other people that's in our community that may don't know, maybe thinking about have some talented kids, uh, Monroe might be a spot. You know, you got a brother like Frank over there that's going to make sure you heard what he talk about, educating these kids about money and finances. Because that's what we, that's what coaches and all this is about. It's not just the game, but making our young people be accountable, teach them how to be young men, young ladies, and, uh, and how do we build this wealth, keep the wealth for a sustainable future. And that's one of our commitments here at Both Sides of the Conversation. Every Thursday, we have an educational Thursday presentation. We teach financial literacy. We have people come on, teach all kinds of things on wealth building. And, um, you know, we just thankful for the people that is professional in our community that come on and give our people game. But definitely, Frank, I I'm happy to have you here. You're part of the family now. Definitely yeah. on some of these up, 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 uh, coming conversations. Definitely want to reach out to you. And, and, and also for all the brothers on here, you know, if there's anything we could do, if you have a, a event going on and you want to blast it out to uh, our group, our members, uh, you know, definitely share that information so that we can uh, get it out there. But uh, thanks again for being a hit, Jim. You know, being a stand-up guy in our community, helping our young people, I think that that's just amazing, man. And it's just cool because tonight we got educators on here, not only just coaches, educators. You know what I'm saying? So thank you again, Coach Knight, man. Appreciate all the things you're doing. I hope you and Adante get that up. You know, we had that brother on here last week, sharp brother, good dude. And uh, you guys do that, man. We need that for our young people, man. So with that being said, we're going to move on. To the guy, HP, Harold Pearson, man. This brother here, man, doing some amazing things. And we're going to have him come on here and tell you guys a lot of the things that he has going on. He is the CEO of SPAT. He's responsible for leading organizations strategically to fulfill their missions. He's an a innovative CEO with, a, with experience managing and creating programs and initiatives in the fields of business, education, athletic diversity, and equity and inclusion, man, and, and a list of other things. But, again, another educator. Talking about athletes, talking about educating, being intentional, a CEO. See, we have to stop saying that there's not brothers in the community doing things. We got some gyms out there that's doing amazing things, man. And uh, here's another amazing gym. He's going to come up and talk to y'all. Come on, Harold, man. Come on on and uh, talk to the people. Let them know what you got going on and uh, all the amazing things that you're doing, brother. Appreciate you, Jim. Uh, I mean, John, uh, you know, they told me you was a good brother, but man, I'm, I'm having second thoughts now, man. You had me go behind Nate and, and Frank, man. What else was supposed to do, man? Come on, man. Two legends of the Bay, man. Come on, man. You're supposed to be looking out for your boy. <laughs> so, man, no, I, I appreciate uh, being amongst, like I said, the legends of the, of the Bay, man. And I um, appreciate you having me on here today. And, um, you know, it's been it's been a, a great ride, a great journey. I'm actually not from the Bay, man. I, I just I've been out here for a long time, man. I, can't, I got out here in 1997, man, um, at uh, UC Berkeley. Got a chance to you know play football, um, go to school there, major in business. And um, before you know, I'm originally from Sacramento, man. And so um, you know, I wanted to ball. You know, I wanted, I'm a football guy. And so, um, you know, that was a dream of mine, but, you know, nobody told me anything in, in high school. So I didn't apply to a college. I didn't, I didn't do any of that stuff. So I just ended up at a JC, you know, American River Junior College. Um, ended up with a, a, a English as a second language class, all remedial classes. And the, 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 the counselor was like, he, yeah, you need to take these classes. I'm like, lady, I know how to speak English. I got that down. Um, I know how to read. And so um, I actually hooked up with a brother. I didn't find that this out about 15 years later, but um, our brother that does Street Soldiers, another legend. Um, oh, man, I'm having, a, I'm having a senior moment. I'm forgetting the brother's name. Dr. Marshall? Okay, Dr. Joe, Marshall. Dr. Marshall? So Dr. Marshall, Dr. Marshall's brother, Jerry Marshall, is a, is a uh, oh, yeah. at American River Junior College. Oh, so yeah. Jerry Marshall actually... I went to him, he hooked me up with the classes that I needed to get into a CSU UC. And so um, uh, ended up getting recruited um, by a number of different schools. Cal found out I was a qualifier because uh, my dad made me take the, the SAT over again. We bombed it the first time we took it, me and my brother. And so I ended up at Cal, man. And so um, played with a lot of brothers, um, Namdi, Asamoah, Delta O'Neill, um, Langston Walker. 
So, uh, you know, I had a great time there, but I, you know, I saw the opportunity for a lot of other young brothers that didn't make it. And so I was like, man, these cats are smart enough. They, 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 uh, they got enough talent. Some can ball, some don't need the ball. But, you know, I saw that, that chasm um, that we see a lot of our brothers fall into. And so, you know, I wanted to do something about that. Um, but, you know, shortly after I graduated, you know, the, the promise is, you know, you go to these one of the big time universities, you know, you're going to ball on the field, you may get shot in the league, but you're going to be successful after. Um, but this was 2001, 9-11. Um, I couldn't find a job anywhere, man. I was, man, I'm talking about the GNC, the uh, local grocery store. I'm talking about, I couldn't find a man at the, the Rite Aid. I couldn't find a job anywhere. So um, I got in, we got into some stupid stuff, got into the cannabis industry before it was medicinal um, and doing some other dumb stuff. Ended up at Santa Rita uh, uh, Mini Junior College uh, for a little bit. And so um, that kind of sparked something else. It was like, man, I seen, you know, it was like a family reunion in there, man. It was just brothers coming in and out and it was, it was just all good. I'm, I'm in there like, man, I ain't never coming back to this joint, but you know, it's a, it's a bunch of brothers that's in there, man. It's, it's good. And so, um, you know, my, my thing was, you know, I know I'm gonna figure this thing out. I'm not coming back, but what about the brothers that don't have a degree, don't have, you know, a network, don't have opportunities, the vision for what their life could really be like. And so that's when, you know, we started SPAT, um, student program for academic and athletic transitioning you know, back in uh, 2003, um, 2006, we started a pilot program at McClimates with six students. Um, I, I left my job, I was, I was in corporate America, left my job, took over full time in 2008, um, spent all my savings up. Um, one of our guys is there that y'all know, Marcus Peters is there. Um, I've been working heavy with it with um, OG, another Oakland legend, y'all need to get him on here. Um, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Peters, Coach Poole. Um, been a, a legendary coach, legendary coach at McClimates. And so we've grown the program and um, we've just been helping student athletes, man. So helping them on the field and helping them in the classroom mainly. Um, so college advising, um, academic support, and just, just making sure they have some round out advocacy, making sure they're getting in the right classes. Y'all know how brothers get done in these public schools. And so we need to have somebody that's, what, that's looking out for them and that's teaching them the right, the right things like, you know, uh, brother Nate and, and uh, brother Frank is doing. So, you know, we just, we just doing the things that we need to do that everybody else is doing, man. This, this is, this ain't rocket science, but it's passion. You gotta be tough to be in this game and, and to look out for the community. Um, we, we have an initiative right now, it's called the College and Career Sports Performance Initiative. And that's to make sure there's um, support for student athletes at every high school and middle school in Oakland. And so, so there's that academic support. They had that advisor to have somebody to go to that academic coach that can support them on that campus. So um, they actually the, the 49ers jumped in with us. They're supporting, you know, what we're doing. We got a good partnership with OAL, with uh, Brother Frankie over there and Lamont doing some good work. And so, you know, we're just looking to grow this thing, man, grow inside of Oakland and outside of Oakland now get some, you know, um, you know, there's just a lot of need out there, especially for our brothers and, and our sisters. And so uh, we just did an event with the, with the Niners, the, the, um, the Niners, the A's and the Warriors. We had a, a sister to sister event. We had about 40 girls from all over the city. They got a chance to learn about careers and sports and um, just being a, a professional young lady, you know, a woman uh, being a professional and how to take care of themselves. So we, we've also had to be creative you know, get it innovative with this COVID situation. Our kids going through a lot, man, families going through a lot. So, you know, we're just trying to fill the gap and uh, stand in the gap for these families and for these kids, man. Man, that's what's up. I mean, that's that's very dope. And, uh, you know, I know uh, one of the sisters from 100% College Prep is on here. So I'm, I definitely want to make sure you uh, put your information in the chat as well. Uh, she's doing some amazing thing with the college students. And I think you guys definitely should link up on something that's very important. And uh, I'm glad you came on and spoke about that because our young people need to understand um, entrepreneurship. And I think this is, you know, important for our community to start understanding. If COVID has taught us nothing else, you know, nothing's guaranteed. And I think we definitely have to start pushing our young people um, as hard as we push them for college, also push them for trades, push them for being business owners, and really giving them the tools and information 
to be successful because again, I'm on these calls and some of our young people ain't cut out to go to corporate America. Some of them ain't gonna be ready to work in a large uh, uh, corporation. So how do we still, we need them to be productive and doing things in the community, starting their own business, finding them to tap into things that they love and wanna do, I think is is important. And, and one of the other things that you brought up uh, about this Hidden Gym segment, definitely we wanna get those brothers out. So if you could share that information with our team to get that out, um, you know, that's what we wanna do here is highlight these brothers and sisters of our community that's doing something, nominate somebody. Reach out to us at both sides of the conversation at Gmail. Let's get them on here. Let's let the community know because sometimes there is a lot of work going on in the community and the community don't know about it, you know, and the certain few that they had in their network get the, uh, access to the information and some don't. So what we want to do here is kind of pop, be one of the platforms to help provide that information to the community. That was the idea and the thought behind making this happen, using this platform to, to get our people engaged, start working on uniting. And uh, I think that's important. So definitely if someone out there want to nominate somebody that's doing some amazing thing in your community, I mean, this is, it's no hiccups, no holdups, no geographical holdups, man. We on Zoom, we, we all over the place. So definitely wherever you guys are at, reach out to us. But uh, thanks, Harold, for uh, all the stuff you're doing with the young people. Uh, you know, one of the things I want to say before Corey come on, all these brothers on here, every one of them is doing something for the young people. That's amazing. And there's so many people that say black men ain't doing nothing for the young people. And every one of these brothers on here is doing something in education, something with athletics, something with helping out some young people, man. So I, I, I want to help break that myth, man, because I hear it so much. You know, me and Rico, we doing our mentoring, we doing our stuff for the community. And I'm just so happy tonight to have some more brothers on here to prove this, this myth that's out there, this stigma that it's a, we need more. We need more of our brothers to step up. But there is a, a tremendous amount of men in the community doing some amazing things. So uh, thank you, Harold. Please. I just, I just want to say, man, I appreciate what y'all are doing here because this this is so important in our community for us to start telling our own stories and, and stay ahead of the narrative. Like we know, we know his brothers in there getting down. You know, we know his sisters in here getting down, but we got to start pumping these stories. And and I was saying the other day, you know, Unibrow just, uh, Anthony Davis, you know, he just signed five years. $190 million. Everybody knows that it's, it's all over the news, sports center, the kids know, but you know, we got to do a better job. And what you're doing right here is telling those stories and getting that marketing out there, marketing what's really, what's really important. Brothers that's really being able to take care of themselves, taking care of their families, being successful, taking care of the community as well. And so, yeah, man, I, I appreciate just being here and, and what y'all doing um, as a whole. Man, definitely. We definitely want to reach out to you guys. Any of our conversations that we post, join our group, our Facebook group, Both Sides of Conversation. Y'all can reach us on all our social media handles, Both Sides of Conversation on YouTube. Uh, we out there. We just trying to make it better. We trying to take new ideas, trying to unify the community. Uh, we don't, we're not going to let COVID stop us from communicating and unifying the community. So definitely. Yeah. Uh, it, hey, John. Yeah, but I just, I, I, I just want to say that I think the, un, I think the, the the elephant in the room per se or say that you know a lot of like these you know sports programs and things that are in the sports don't really care about education and that's a that's a big myth because man i scratch my head i swear to god man since this uh i don't know if you guys know what's going on with the ncaa for the 2021 class it is terrible right now and man mm -hmm. i've been calling out the colleges i ain't never ever heard of before just to introduce myself to try to get our kids, you know, a, a, a free education. And I don't look at it as a athletic style. I look at it as a free education because you got to go there and get some education. You go out there and get a degree and do what you mean. I, man, I'm, I'm all about life after the ball stopped bouncing. And John, I don't know if you all, if you see that in my posts, but I'm always about life after that ball stopped bouncing because that ball going to stop bouncing. And then you got to come on. You got to do my, myself, Frank, Corey, and Harold. And what you doing, we got to go do some real work. So um, definitely. I, think I, I just I definitely want to commend everyone because every one of these brothers, I don't know Harold too well, but I know Frank and I know Corey and, and Harold just listening to you, man. It's just about putting the education forefront. Ain't nobody talk about too much sports if, you, if the audience know that by now. We talking about getting these kids productive and being great citizens after the ball stopped bouncing. 
Hey, and that's real. And yes, Nate, I see it. And that's why I always support, share, and support your information because you always trying to educate the people. And I think that's amazing. So you brothers keep doing what you're doing. And I'm glad we all on here. Hope you guys all get to network with each other because that's the other part of this, you know, bringing people together to collaborate because in our community, you know, we got enough egos. Everybody trying to do their own thing. Everybody trying to be the man. And we see what that attitude has got the black community not too far. Right. The other communities are getting ahead because they working together, even through their differences, you know, making progress. And it's time with all what's going on with COVID, the change in this country, the movement, the resistance, the protest. It is time for us to black folks, brown folks. Let's work together. We got the same struggles. We got the same issues. We got the same disparities. How do we put it all together, unify this thing and make it move forward? So thank you for saying that, Nate. And uh, we're going to go on here and move to our last hit gym tonight. The myth, the legend. Oh, no, not this dude. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, man. This guy right here, man. Take your mask off, baby. Come on, man. Take your mask off, man. This brother right here, man. Let me tell y'all something, man. If y'all don't know the story, I'm sure Corey will tell you the story, man. I have nothing but the utmost respect for this man right here, man. This man, when I met him, I was at my lowest point in my life. You know what I'm saying? And all I've seen from that brother, from the time I met him, has been activism in a community, organizing in the community, working with the young people, educating. He's an educator, giving them game. You know what I'm saying? Passing the torch to the young people, telling them the obstacles and the things that he made mistakes on to make them better. Being that leader, being that example, keeping it real when keeping it real wasn't cool. <laughs> Believe me, this brother right here will tell you the truth when the truth don't need to be said, whether he in the hood where it's all bad, whether he's in the community. <laughs> he, Corey go speak his mind and tell you he's always, like Nate and Frank and the rest of the brothers on here, reaching out to other brothers, trying to collaborate, helping in any way he can, never cry, never complain about it. Always spreading itself thin. Man, we got my brother on here, man, Mr. Corey Monroe, man. He always helping in our mentoring program, giving up his time to come mentor our young young people. They love him. When he's not there, they like, where Co at? You know, because uh, he keep it real. He on their level. He stay tuned in with the young people in their language and uh, everything that was going on and, and just love family. You know, that's one thing that I always took from Corey. He is always about his family, supporting his family, doing stuff with his family. And that's kind of, you know, like, help me in my thing because I'm always about my kid, my family. And uh, you know, without further ado, Corey, you know all the stuff you did to help me, man. But I mm. we wanted to highlight you and make sure people know, man, Mr. Monroe is a movement. <laughs> he do a lot of things for us in the community, man. So salute to you, my brother. Thank you, Corey, man, for coming on tonight. Man, let the people know who you is who don't know all the amazing things you doing in the school district, around the community. You know, and just you know, just being a supportive brother, man. Let let the people know, Cole. What's up, everybody? Uh, uh man, this is a hard act to follow, man. You gonna put me behind Frank Harrow and Nate, man? <laughs> These brothers, they deep, man. But uh, the reason why I'm here, man, I'm blessed, man. It's God, man, because I'd have been quit. I've already quit eight night. You know what I mean? But it's it's God, man. Uh, forgive me for being outside. I had to wash my comforter, man. My my washing machine will blow up if I put my confidence in there. So I had to come down here to the a big washing machine. <laughs> my shit will start shaking and the whole house will catch on fire, man. But uh, yeah, man, the work is the work, man. God is good working with, uh, you know, Omega Live Free for so many years, man. I'm old school. I call it Omega Boys Club, man. You know, Jack Jaqua, Dr. Marshall, uh, Miss Norris, you know, Mr. Worthy. I'm from the old school, so... It come from our soul to work with young people, man. And I'm, I mean, John is amazing, man. John was on my caseload, man. John was off the hook back in the days, man. And running in and out of juvenile hall, man. But he changed his life, man. He, It's amazing to see John, man. Hey, Nate, I used to have to call John at seven. He used to have to be in the house at seven. And it was, uh, you remember house phones? What yes, he sir. would do, he would answer the phone and then leave, man. I roll up on the side. I'm like, get your ass back in the house, man. You. <laughs> That's how I used to be. You Come know on, man. They saying? caught on to that quick. They, they caught, caught on, on to that. that uh, them phone calls. They knew once you call, you ain't calling back no you more. You ain't calling back. That's how John was, man. But to see him change his life and do what he's doing, man, just amazing, man. And 
you know, I learned a lot from him too, man. Um, uh, Rico, man, Rico, you know, we was going up to the jails doing some groups, man. And, you know, Rico put his life out there too, man. So we just out here making changes, man. I work at a middle school, Everett, with uh, young people. Now we on Zoom school, man. You know, we making it the best of, of uh, what we can, man. We all miss the school, man. Our kids tired of being at home, you know what I mean? I ain't tired of being at home. I'm ready to do Zoom school the rest of my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You wake up and be at work, man. Come on, take a shower, get some coffee. Oh man, I'm trying to find a Zoom school, man. <laughs> but you know, they making the best of it, man. I hear a lot of negative stuff about the young people on Zoom, but our kids come in and they, they do their best, man. I'm like Nate, man, they getting some flying color grades, man. But I know they Googling stuff. I, I know. Hell no, nah, you ain't getting all the masters right, man. But they they doing it, man. So I'm proud of our babies. Uh, I'm a little worried because parents do say that they stay in their room all day. That ain't healthy. You know what I mean? So we got to find ways to get them out the house and, you know, to get them to doing something and being active, man, instead of just sitting in that house. But uh, there is hope, you know, and I try to listen to them too, Nate. Like it's a lot of times we got to learn some stuff from the youngsters, man. They they into this digital age, you know what I mean? So it's a big thing. So I learned a lot from them. Uh, we talked to them about drugs. I'm really worried about them with all this music going. We're telling them to use these drugs. And, you know, it, it it's decorated. You know what I mean? It looked good on the video and all that, man. But that stuff can take your mind. So we fight with talking with them about drugs and leaving drugs alone and talking to them about what's cool and what's not, man. And we just love them, man. You know what I mean? It's a nonstop thing. And then working with young adults and trying to get them right. Like, like uh, Nate say, man, it's EDD, man. Woo, they done took off, man. Damn, we got to reel them back in, man. Them cats didn't touch 10, 20 Gs the wrong way. And it's on, man. So, you know, it's a big fight. But, you know, we live another day, John. It's what we do. I talk to Jack every other Friday. Go check in with him. The wizard, you know what I mean? Jack been helping kids for a young, long time. Uh, we've been going to court. We go to court with some youngsters too, um, through uh, through the phone. So we able to advocate, man. Been to court with some adults too, man. So we just trying to help people get out and stay out, you know, and, and, and do the right thing, man. But you know, Johnny don't stop, man. We got to keep doing the work. A lot of shooting, a lot of killing going on, man. It's, Ooh, it's deep, man, but the fight continues. You know, we, we talk to many young youngsters as we can, man, because and I'm tired of burying our young people, man. I'm, I'm 49, about to be 50, if God say the same, February the 3rd, but I want them to live too, man. But you know, we come from them neighborhoods and surviving, and just like Frank said, Frank said he went the other way, man. We gotta teach kids to go the other way too, man. And man, I wish you was around when I was playing basketball. I can pass. I just couldn't shoot that motherfucker, man. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I can pass, boy. I was like magic, boy. But when it comes to shooting, oh no, man, I wouldn't go hit nowhere near the rim. So I, I probably would have been in your league coming out the gate. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I appreciate what y'all doing because our young people need that, man. They need us, man. We in the biggest fight I ever seen, man, with this, this Instagram and you know the way they put stuff out there. So and then you know we getting older, so. You know, we got to find, keep that flow going, man. But we got to keep them alive, man, because I'm in them jails. You know, before COVID, I was in there about 20 years going in and out them jails doing groups. When they catch them cases, it ain't funny. You know what I'm saying? When they got to do them 10 and 20, ain't no gangster no more, man. They be crying and Nate know how it go, man. Y'all know how it go. They want a letter from the community center and want the, the church to write them. They ain't been to church since they was 10, but they want a letter. You know what I mean? And it's real in them jails, man. And they've been catching a few of them. So, you know, John, we just got to keep doing the work, man. That's what we do. We do the work and we ain't going to stop, man. You know, even though I, I'm like Nate, man, I feel like I get deflated in the work. But, you know, we got to keep ourselves pumped up, man, because if we don't do it, who going to do it, man? You know what I'm saying? And appreciate you, John, because you keep us motivated, man. You really do. And mentoring with John on Wednesdays when I can, man, that's talking to them youngsters is amazing, man. They uh. If it wasn't for the youngsters, I don't know who I'd be, man. I work with six, seven, and eight graders, and they make me laugh all the time, man. They keep me inspired, you know what I mean? And we just, we doing it for them, John. That's what we doing it for, man. 
Yeah, off top, man. And, and you know, for people that know don't know, man, you know, like Corey's talking about, man, he doing so much work in the San Francisco County Jail. Um, me and him did, I mean, 20 plus years, yeah. you know, two nights a week working at San Francisco YGC. I mean, mm. Corey, we probably did about what, 3,000 meetings together? Oh Monday, man, Tuesday, so many. A year. Yep. And people don't understand how important that work is. And you know, I know we have a political climate where things are changing with the, with the justice system and locking our people up, these young people. Um, but sometimes, so the people understand, when we get these young people in juvenile, or we get these young people in the county jail, when their system is clear of the drugs, and their system is clear of the anger and the hate, and they isolated, and they eating right, and they sleeping right, sometimes that's the only time we really get to reach these Say young it. people to talk to them. That's you know, right. I'm definitely all for not locking my people up just because of the slavery and the things we've been through. But I also understand with all of the violence and the stuff that's going on in our community. And I know Corey and Nate, we understand that sometimes the ego, you know, yeah. the, the the stuff that these young men are going through with the hate, you know, the, the economical and social disadvantages, seeing all of this stuff on the internet, wanting to be the man and, and, and everybody with bands on the internet, making bad decisions. Sometimes the only time we can reach those young people, man, is when they locked up. Corey, yeah. how many times do we talk to these kids and they clean their system up, they yeah. eat, they think a whole different, you like, you read the yeah. case and you like, is this the same kid, man? And it just goes to show you the effect of the drugs in the community, the effect of this music. As soon as we get them in a space and educate them and teach them and learn they self, some productive young man. So yeah, Corey, you know, thank you for coming on. Thank you for all the work you're doing with our uh, middle school kids and the, and the kids who really need it. You know, like, like you doing a difficult job, you know, you gotta have a lot of patience. So, you know. Uh, hey, John. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, John, Corey right in the middle. So Corey got to stop his kids from going down to Mission High School. You know, right. they going yeah. block away. Then he got to yeah. stop Mission High School kids from coming oh, up to the man. senior high school All kids. day It'd be long, off man. the hook. It'd be oh, off the hook God. on Church Street from three It'd to be, five. Woo. It'd be off the hook. Nate, standing out in front of the school man, for like 30 know. minutes trying to make sure they clear out, man. Man, and don't, I already don't, know. Don't let it be no drama in our school. They want to go down there and help. That's their cousin, brother, and or yeah. they come up there, man. It's it's. Woo. Yeah, I thought this is a liar. I thought this is a liar about you. He said, "Yeah, man, Corey is the glue here. Oh, without man. Corey, between mission and Everett, there's gonna be problems." Oh man, we we go at it, man. You know, we we blessed enough to know some people to stop some of it, but when they get their cousins in there, you are like, "Oh Lord!" But I'd be like, "You know these little kids, right? You know how much time you gonna do? Sometimes you gotta go mentally, right? Like you punch this little dude, you going down for five. He ain't gonna do three days, but it worked. You know what I mean?" <laughs> good it job, worked, Corey. Man. Good job. Man. Now, I'm proud yeah. of all y'all, man. We got to keep doing what we're doing. But I'm tired too, though, Nate. I be, Nate, I be feeling you, man. I be ready to give up, bro. <laughs> and what else? I mean, it's God, man. I can't, I swear I'm ready to quit. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't give up, Corey. It's just, you yeah. know, it's in my blood. But I got these, I'm just trying to Ooh. lay it down. I seriously only got, this is my last team I'm coaching. I mean, I got yeah. a bunch of, 11th graders playing uh, right now on, you know, 17s. But, man, after this team, I'm done. I'm going to leave it to the, to the young guys, man. Let them do that. I'm just going to make sure I still secure the – I'm going to make sure they set for 10 years. They fucking no, up right. from there, then that's on them. That's right. That's right. And we got to teach – my thing now, I mean, like uh, Siobhan Hunter say this, we got to teach live in peace, man, because everything is like rest in peace. So you remember John at Omega – Live and free, they, they always said we have addiction to incarceration and death syndrome. So we got to find a way, like Nate teaching basketball and, and, and Harold and, and Frank, they doing all the great stuff, man. We got to teach living in peace, man, and, and life, man, because we, we forgot about celebrating life, man. It's all, only time we coming together, I'm looking at these funerals, and there's so many people, man, but we, that's like a family reunion. We got to change that, man. We got to find a way to, you know, when this these parks open back up, how we get back to playing baseball and basketball and enjoying yeah. ourselves where we all walk away, man. But it got to be about life, man. I don't know the rodeo. I don't know if I'm old, man, but something we got to, you know, because it's just, I look at the funerals, it's just like, man, we just, everybody there. And another thing, like, we want to take five minutes to talk when somebody died. What about walking up to homeboy and, and telling him that before he died, man? Can we get at 
two minute speech to the homie on the block or the John, sister on the block. That's what John always talking about, man. Give people their roses while they're here. But yeah. you know, Corey, this is almost this is scary now. Time for San Francisco. This is bringing me back. I know you know this. This is like early. Yeah. I mean, late nineties, two thousands. There man. you go. This is there a, you go. I mean, yeah. this ain't as bad as the eighties and the crack era and all that. But yeah. this is this shit. The last two yeah. months is is no, it's real. tough, man. Definitely. Yeah. It really is real. Now, nah, definitely, definitely, man. You know, but um, you know, I want to say this before we wrap this up. I want to try to give everybody a, a last little uh, farewell. You know, Rico always lead question. He wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, we talked about the Zoom school, and I just want to hear from you guys as educators, as trying to educate our people um, <clears throat> with the disadvantages of Zoom. Some of the things that you guys have heard, seen some of your students struggle with school. Um, one of the concerns that I have. Um, with the school districts across, you know, America, our black and brown kids are home at Zoom school. And I'm going around a lot of the private schools in San Francisco, different communities, and those kids are still going to school. And with the struggles that we hear from some of our students that's doing this on Zoom, um, you know, interacting, learning, having those struggles, how do y'all, how much do y'all think that's going to affect these kids from this one year, possibly year and a half, two years out of school? Anybody think, can jump in. I think the young, it's going to affect the young kids a lot, I think. Um, I got some youngsters at the house. I got a first grader at the house. And you can't really do no Zoom first grade. I mean, you know, you're in first grade to meet people. You're not in first grade to learn nothing. You, you learn how to be a human, how to socialize and stuff like that, right? Um, the older kids, it just depends on, you know, where you fall. I got some kids are doing really, really good in Zoom and then others who aren't. Here's the crazy thing. In my experience, the black boys do well in Zoom. You want to know why? Because they're not being graded for stupid stuff, right? The stuff that the teacher comes into the room grading already, right? What you got on, how you looking, how your face looking. Did you drop a pencil? Did you? So you can't grade that anymore. You're just grading what's turned in. Right. So I've seen with a lot of the black boys that great skyrocket, you know what I mean? And that should send a bigger message to education. That's what I'm telling our principals. That should send a huge message to y'all about what we're doing. You know what I mean? We're grading more about other things than it is about actually what's going on in the classroom. Um, but if a kid can't really, if a kid's not a, a gadget kid or a kid that can, you can keep their attention on the screen for a long period of time, this is not going to be the method for them to go to school. They're gonna have a lot of stuff going on. If you have brothers and sisters at the house or you gotta take care of stuff and all kinds of stuff going on, it's gonna be tough for you to focus on school there. So that's just, you know, our, my, my experience. With, with yeah, I, and, I, and I definitely wanted to, uh, you know, ask that and I'm glad you uh, gave that perspective because, you know, black and brown kids are the highest kids that's diagnosed for ADHD, ADD. And, and that's what I was trying to get at, like the attention span, how that's going to affect them. So, you know, that, that that's a great perspective, uh, Frank. Thanks for uh, sharing that. Nate, anybody want to talk about their kids or what they see with the Zoom schooling and the effect that it's yeah. caused? Yeah, the Zoom, I mean, you know, we started, like I said, we had to pivot and, you know, we shifted our funding from, you know, basketball and with the grace, you know, with the, with the, with the, um, with the blessings of our sponsors to, Put it towards case management for the kids, you know, not blasting the school district. I know they got a lot on their plate, but there are tons of kids that's just left in the cracks. And um, we deal with kids who are not, um, you know, logging on voluntarily. It takes them a while or their mom got to go to work at six in the morning or so, and so they ain't got time to make sure they log. So we created a, a system that we got case managers assigned to, you know, five five to eight kids and they make sure they are, you know, on task every week. They meet uh, at the end of the week, they meet with the parents to review the week and, you know, preview the upcoming week. And, you know, and we're, you know, we're making sure they, you know, they're fed, they ate and they full and they just having, you know, and then afterwards we're trying to get them some, um, whether it's a, um, workouts on Zoom or if they want to do some extracurricular stuff outside or whatever it is we just try to make sure that they're supported and you know like i say i'm just happy that you know our um you know our sponsors our funders were were happy that we were able to pivot and they gave us a full blessing to make sure that happened so 
um, I'm just happy and excited that we're able to help out and make sure that these kids are staying on task because like, you know, everybody said, it's, it's going to be tough, man. And I don't know, you know, and I'm, you know, I've been dealing with these high schools for my team, I guess, for the last three, four years. And I'm just scared of them going into college and stuff there. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be hard. They're going to struggle. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> I think we're going to get a lot of holdbacks, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> I think we're going to get a lot of holdbacks and things like that. You know, I'm not a fan of the holdbacks, but this year I wouldn't be mad at them because I don't think they're learning too much um, academically, man. And my case managers, I, we always tell the parents, they are not teachers. All we're there is try to support, make sure that they're on, they got Wi-Fi, they got some food in their stomach, they're, you know, prepared to have a good day. You know what I'm saying? But I'm scared. I really am. Harold, you want to jump in there and say something? You are Corey? <clears throat> yeah, man. Um, you know, uh, with and just, I think Frank mentioned this, like we, you know, it's a struggle. It is it is a call out is to some some accountability on our school systems. But I think, you know, our school system been running like this for a long time. And we kind of been playing the game with them for a long time. And they struggling because of the information. The information is not built for us. The systems are not built for us. They're not built for our success. So, and I and, and I'm I'm definitely part of the problem, you know. Um, and we need to look at different solutions. We need to rethink. I'm having to rethink this whole thing myself. You know, what is education? What does a high school diploma really mean? What does a college degree really mean? Is it really worth it? You know, um, you know, we, we I'm working with some some alumni you know, um, athletes from Cal. And, you know, we're looking at what, what's the outcomes of our guys playing or in our gals playing? Like, are they really, are they really getting success? You know, this is number one university in, on the planet supposed to be, but we got guys coming out, you know, not having jobs doing the same stuff. So what is, what is our education look like and how can we take ownership of it and ownership of the information? Um, I think we need to have our own schools. You know, every other community has their own schools. They go to public schools, but they have a home base. And we need to start creating some home bases um, where we can we can control the information. We can control what's being imparted, um, both on, you know, learning our history, uh, learning the basics, learning entrepreneurship. These kids seeing all this money going back and forth, they, they looking, they trying to see what's going on. They want to know about the money. How do I get to the money? You know, and so that's a lot of the issues we have in our community is, you know, it's a, it's a lack of resources. So people are, you know, people's pockets are touching. So, you know, they're gonna look for they're gonna look for any way to get in yours. You know, so um, or just get unfocused. So I, I think yeah, we we just need to you know rethink what we're doing and come up with some solutions that we can own and that we can control and we can implement ourselves. That's deep. That's deep. Go ahead, Corey. You can wrap it up. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get in trouble for this, but uh. Man, we, we got no, some youngsters, man. Don't get in trouble, look, Corey. Don't look, get in trouble. <laughs> look, man, we, we got some youngsters that wasn't going to class when school was in, man. So, you know, like, you know, so like even and our they school is, students now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you right. So, like, I mean, some stuff we can't even blame on Zoom school, man. Some was hanging in the hallway or hanging down the street and same with you see them for Mission High School. So some of the kids, we was already it was a fight already to just to get them in class, man. But, you know, I mean, Zoom school definitely it's going to have its effects because I think the hours, the hours of school got cut back. You know what I'm saying? So that's just major. And then it's, it's different on how you can help a kid at at school and then Zoom because, you know, you when you sitting in that big old, you know, with all them faces, man, it's hard to ask questions. We have a breakout room, but you're still going in there with four or five young people, so you can't really ask that 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 question. But I try to let them know, you know, it's things Mr. Monroe don't know. I ain't got no problem saying, "Hey, I don't know," you know what I mean, and never had because I learned that at you know Omega and uh, Live and Free. But man, yo, know, it's I mean, we definitely gonna be lacking, you know. But I don't know, Nate. I don't think they gonna hold them back. They just going, you know, we just got a lot of work to catch up on. We probably got to do some double assignments or something, man, because we definitely, I think this year is like half, I think they only learn in half, man. You get what I'm saying? That's, 
how I feel. But again, man, they love this technology. So I think we got a lot of lot to learn as adults. When school do start back, I think we need to start using more technology. All that writing on the board, man, that, that's old school. Maybe we, you know, we need to find some form of just doing more on the computers, man. Yeah, that's a good perspective, man. And I, I think one of the, the great functions uh, that Zoom will help our community is because when school does come back and people are back in schools, we know that the black and brown community suffer the highest rates of expulsion, suspensions, uh, different things of that nature. Now with the Zoom tool, we'll be able to still get to educate our uh, kids remotely. So I think that's one of the benefits, but I think all you guys' perspectives was right. I think as a community, we need to really start paying attention to the school district while we have all this defunding going on, this reform going on, everybody wanna break up things. I think sy systemically our educational system has, as attacked our black and brown community the hardest. And I think it's time for reform. It's time to come with new ideals, how to educate and, and, and integrate with our, our young black and brown kids. Um, I think this conversation is needed. And I think we need all of the community, all the parents, the fathers, the mothers to come together and really hold these people uh, to the fire. And, uh, and, and, and I think Frank said it, the truth of the matter is our state and many other states wasn't prepared for this type of thing. And we spend a lot of money on emer emergency preparedness. And one thing that this pandemic has taught us at all levels, all industries, that we are not ready. So how do we intentionally as a community force our leadership to get ready, whether it's an earthquake, a pandemic, violence, whatever, so that we stay ahead to keep our kids engaged with information and surrounding them with the tools to win. So I think that's important. So with that being said, we're going to end tonight's Hidden Gym segment. I want to thank all of the Kings for coming on tonight. This was very powerful. Uh, <laughs> I mean, ladies, all the ladies that have something to say, you got brothers over here that's doing major things with the young brothers, man, and the young sisters of the community. I don't want to hear it no more. They out here, reach out to them. They put their information out there, collaborate with them. Let's help continue further educate and promote our young people. But with that being said, I'm going to move on to outro. This Thursday, we have an amazing sister coming on. She's a trademark business attorney, Brianna Phillips. She's going to come on our educational Thursdays. She's going to teach us about the business, trademark, copyright. She's an entertainment lawyer. Uh, she's going to answer some questions. She's going to do an amazing presentation to educate our community. We know here in the Bay Area, there's a lot of rappers. There's a lot of artists. There's a lot of people doing different things. This is the type of sister you need to connect with so you can make sure that the business is handled. 90% of the failure in the industries of art and music is the contracts the information so here's a solid sister with great information willing to come on and educate our community about the business side why it's important to have a business lawyer to make sure that your royalties make sure all your stuff is right she's going to come on and teach you how to really protect your business and your assets so i think this thursday will be a great uh, educational presentation. If you want to learn about it, please join on both sides of the conversation. That's going to happen. I think it's going to be amazing. And then this Sunday, we're going to have supervisor, San Francisco supervisor, May Haney coming on, District 6 supervisor, going to talk about the things that he's going on, some of the obstacles he had to face in, uh, uh, in his community, in his district, how we move forward. We're going to bring up a lot of topics, just an in-depth conversation. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to get a few questions from the people, uh, but definitely, uh, join us this Sunday. That should be an interesting conversation. Uh, just talk about some of the things that's happening with this COVID, how we move uh, forward as city, policies, different things that he's a part of. I know they just had a big success with this mental health thing. Uh, so we'll talk about that. I think that'll be a, a depth conversation. It'll be great for the community. And then the following Tuesday, we'll have a special guest for two amazing, powerful ladies of our city. Um, and we'll give you that information as we get closer here to the end of the week. But uh, just want to thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, if you have a nominee, like we said earlier, that you want them to be nominated for a hidden gem for some amazing things that they're doing in your community or our community, please reach out to us at both sides of the conversation at Gmail. Make sure you hit us up so we can get them on. If you are a black and brown business, before I go, I want to make sure our black and brown businesses hear it again. We have some coming up. This platform is for you. We don't care if you have one employee. We don't care if you're a sole proprietor, if you have 50 employees. We want to promote your business and we want our community to get behind you and spend their dollars in your in your business, patronize your business. That's what we want to do here. So definitely uh, have them reach out to us so we can get them on and promote their business as well. 
make sure you guys tune in. It's very important. We have our YouTube up. You can follow up on our videos and uh, continue to support. If you miss the show, see what's going on. And then to our special team, to our amazing team on the back end that's doing an amazing thing, Asia, Jada, Kashla, that's keeping this thing going, even through all of the COVID, they working hard, staying up late, making sacrifices to make sure that the community is getting the information that's needed and unifying the community. So they are hitting gyms every week, every day, because they're putting in the work behind the scenes to make sure that our community, we are feeding the community. And again, like we say here on both sides of the conversation, you can't leave the community if you don't feed the community with the three pack love, food, information and knowledge man so that's what we're doing here so thank you guys we're going to Go see get you some water man take a I break exactly. <laughs> i sound like an auctioneer right now i'm, I'm, like, one of the guys, I'm like one of the guys auctioning off cars <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys hey, for, hey thank you guys you're gonna for, be on you're gonna be on revolt